What's up everyone, we are back today for part 2 of our Battle Scarred series, where we take a look at skins that get better with higher wear. This list includes lots of skins from the new case, and a knife that looks absolutely amazing in Battle Scarred, so definitely stick around for that. Congrats to the winner of the Falchion Tiger Tooth giveaway, and next video I will be announcing the giveaway at 10,000 subs. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like, and with that being said, let's get into the video. Kicking things off, we have the Edgelord, which is a new skin from the Kilowatt case. It's a full black M4A4 with a snake drawing laid out through the whole gun. When it gets to Battle Scarred, the background actually turns bronze, giving the skin a completely different look. Now, the flow range for the skin is 0 to 0.80, and the higher the flow is on the skin, the darker the bronze color gets. The Edgelord in this video is actually 0.70, because at this float we get a nice mix of the bronze color and the skin keeps its vibrant shininess. Very nice wear pattern that allows you to choose the color of your M4. Up next is the AK Inheritance, which is also from the Kilowatt case. It's an AK-47 based on fine Chinese porcelain, complete with elegant floral striping. When it's battle scarred, golden cracks begin to show around the gun, giving it a marbled look instead. If you prefer golden cracks rather than the clean porcelain look, battle scarred condition will be the best choice here. The float range for this skin is 0 to 0.8, but be sure to get the skin in lower battle scarred float because it gets way too beat up near the 0.80 float cap. The AK Cartel is up next, which is very similar to the stock AK, but on the metal parts we have a ton of 3D engravings in a Calavera art style. Once this skin reaches Battle Scarred, all of the silver actually turns black, and in my opinion, this skin looks absolutely menacing with this black metallic color. Float range for this skin is 0 to 0.75, but any float in the Battle Scarred range will have this black color. The best thing about the skin is its price point of $9, and if you were wondering, the one shown in the video has a 0.50 float. The G3SG High Seas has an old seafarer look to it, complete with a sundial selector switch and engravings on the handguard and buttstock resembling old sailing maps. This skin in Battle Scarred is a completely different story, having a green patina color similar to the Verdigris, almost like it's been left near the seaside for too long. The float range for this skin is 0 to 0.70, and the higher you get to the 0.7 float cap, the more green this skin becomes. The Black Lotus is also found in the Kilowatt case. It has an anodized purple coat with a detailed black lotus drawing covering the whole gun. In Battle Scarred, this skin starts to have an additional pink color added to it. The barrel, mag, and buffer tube, which were all silver, now turn pink and the base purple color of the gun actually gets a pink hue as well. Float range for this skin is 0 to 0.7, and the higher the float, the more pink will be on the gun. I think this is a beautiful skin with a nice twist added to the Battle Scarred condition. The Op Asimov is a legendary Op skin, resembling a sci-fi facility with some advanced geometry and bright colors. In Battle Scarred, you get the iconic Black Emov, and it now looks like a facility you would find in a post-apocalyptic world, having a full black scope that allows for some amazing crafting potential. The float range for this skin is 0.18 to 1, but if you want to get a true Black Emov, you need to get this skin in 0.98 float or higher, which is actually very rare since the total supply for this op is limited to 1,541 world wide. The R8 Llama Cannon is a purple engraved revolver with an engraved ivory handle and a llama on the barrel. When this skin is in Battle Scarred, it completely changes color, turning silver and having slight gold engravings on the body of the revolver. Not to mention, the paint has a slight purple undertone, which is a nice touch as well. The float range for this skin is 0.03 to 0.7 and gives you lots of different colorways to pick from, depending on if you prefer silver or purple. The Apotheris is very interesting because it's not the typical wear pattern where you see a color change happening with higher floats. Here you have a base blue coat with a drawing of a viper on the side, complete with scales on the scope. However, in Battle Scarred, you maintain the snake drawing on the side, but the entire skin becomes a standard polymer gray. I have to give props to the artist for this skin because the wear pattern they designed here is incredibly detailed and intricate. Next up is another legendary op, the Hyper Beast. This skin is two-tone, complete with a fossil pattern up front and a psychedelic hyper beast on the back of the gun. In Battle Scar, this skin takes on a different look, having most of the details removed except for a scratched out hyper beast on a base gray op. The artist did a wonderful job with the wear pattern of this skin, which works exactly the same way as the Atheris. Float range for this skin is 0 to 1, with higher floats removing the entire background and scratching the hyper beast even more. For the final skin on our list, we actually have a knife, and that is the Crimson Web Bowie Knife. We all know what this skin looks like in Factory New, with its black spider webs and red blade, but what most people don't know is that when this skin gets to Battle Scarred, the blade of this knife isn't silver, it's actually black. All Crimson Web knives have a float cap of 0 to 0.80, with this one being 0.79, and man, this thing looks crazy. 
The red spots on the black blade make this knife look like it's covered in blood, and this is one of the craziest wear patterns that I've seen on any skin in CS2. I would recommend pairing this knife with Nox or Scarlet Champs for an absolute S tier glove knife combo. So, here's another 10 skins that look amazing in Battle Scarred. If you would like a part 3 to this series, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. I'm still working on the flip knife diamond gem video, so that will be coming soon and expect to see some more tier lists with Moody later this week. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Peace out everyone!